Gothic motifs will take on a lot of Romanesque ideas, but they're going to become more complex. And as we move closer and closer to the present day, what we see are forms that will survive, so we've got more examples to work with. One of the most common that we're going to see is the quatrefoil. Now, we dealt with the trefoil already under early Christian motifs. But here we have a four-way design. This is often said to be based on the four-leaf clover or flower petals. But this is made of four symmetrical lobes or foils. And what it allows is it allows frequently in art and architecture for a story to be tell, told in four parts with the main characters placed in the middle. For example, here we seem to have uh, a story going on where we have a death, the body being moved, we have a journey taking place. And this way, we can teach an entire story using four different images. Whereas in the Renaissance and later, more frequently, we will see art created with a single image to depict an entire story. In a less literate society, the more elements of the story you can illustrate, the better. The quatrefoil will be used for tracery, for windows, for all sorts of different designs. Uh, it's just a development that we see in the period. We will also see the use of the ball flower, which is an architectural element in the form of a ball inserted in the cup of a flower. And so here we see the ball in the middle and we see the stylized flower around the outside. This would be far more complex than much of what we saw in the Romanesque. It takes a lot of technical skill to create because I have to create the ball and then I have to carve out around it at least enough to create a convincing illusion that I have actually carved out a freestanding ball. Now, if you were to see this, it's particularly stunning, but it takes a lot of skill. This is showing off the mason or the sculptor's abilities. We will also see the square four petaled flower, uh, where we see petals or leaves radiating from a center in a four-way pattern. Now, this has an advantage. It is square, which means I can use it fairly easily for a lot of design. Whereas when you have ovals and other odd shapes, you have space in between. So you have negative space to deal with. Squares, I can put them together, tessellate them together into larger elements. We'll also see the poppy head. Now this will be common at the top of a piece of furniture or maybe the end of a pew. Generally, it's going to be wood. You often see it in England. And this is really either an actual carving of a poppy head, which we see here, or, well, almost anything. The important thing is that it is symmetrical. So we have the sense of a poppy head, usually a tall, thin piece in the middle and two wings coming out the sides. And here we see a design where they use the poppy head, but they've replaced it with human heads. Uh, so on the back is the poppy head, on the front are the human heads. This would be considered a poppy head ornament. Then we have linen fold. Now, this is a carved ornament, usually for a panel that resembles folded linen, probably originating after the folded napkin on the chalice during the Eucharist, or uh, basically when the body and, uh, sorry, the bread and wine are turned into the body and blood of Jesus during the Catholic Mass. This can be used in furniture panels, as we see here. It can be used in panels on larger wood surfaces, as we see here. Then we have the Dance Macabre. This is the Dance of Death, and this express the medieval allegorical concept of the all-conquering and equalizing power of death, but it goes a little bit further. It creates what's known as a memento mori oftentimes, or a reminder of death, but it's the same basic principle, that death will come for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're really, really wealthy or you're very, very poor, eventually you're going to die. And therefore, you need to remember your immortal soul, and that's the key element, that 
remembrance that you will have this immortal soul that will pass into an afterlife. Do you really want to go to heaven or hell? And so it acts as that reminder. When I use the term memento mori, it's the same thing. It's a reminder of death. And frequently we'll see these images where death or skeletal figures will be dancing with living figures. This is a much later version of it. Uh, but they'll be dancing together as a reminder that death could come at any time. You could be having a great time at the ball and then you lose your shoe and you race off to your pumpkin, but the pumpkin gets hit by a Ferrari. That is going to be a bit of an issue. So it's a reminder. And in the medieval period, in the Romanesque, in the Gothic, this becomes really important because death is surrounding people. They don't understand why their relatives are dying. Things like plague and pandemic are really, really common. So it acts as a religious reminder.